Samurai Pizza Cats 1990 Cartoon Explained Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Terry Cooper and this is Marvelous Videos. Before there was Samurai Pizza Cats, there was Kiato Ninden Tayandi, which literally translates to Cat Ninja Legend. It was a 90s anime that aired for 54 episodes starting from February 1990 to February 1991. Ready? Following its success in Japan, Saban Entertainment picked up the rights to the series which went on to get its North American adaptation, and thus Samurai Pizza Cats was born. With 50 episodes under its belt, the series aired in the United Kingdom and Canada in 1991, but reached the United States in 1996. The original show reveled in its Japanese pop culture references, humor, puns, and its fourth wall breaking. However, a proper Japanese to English translation did not work out for the show due to several reasons which resulted in Samurai Pizza Cats being different when it came to the dialogues while having a very similar premise, story and narrative style. In today's video, we will go over the similarities and the differences as we talk about what makes Samurai Pizza Cats so special. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Now let's begin. What the cartoon television series is all about. Just like its Japanese counterpart, Samurai Pizza Cats is set in a fictional town known as Little Tokyo. The world is a mixture of feudal Japan and a futuristic, technologically advanced society. Animals take up the center stage when it comes to the cast of the show, but these animals are actually anthropomorphic, technologically enhanced creatures. Basically, they're like cybernetic androids. The Prime Minister of Little Tokyo, a bipedal rat known as Big Cheese, wants to overthrow Emperor Fred. Al Dente, the palace guard commander, learns of the Prime Minister's plotting, but can't do anything to get him arrested since he lacks evidence. So he seeks help from three feline androids who run a pizza parlor in the city. These three felines are samurai pizza cats, namely Speedy Service, Polyester, and Guido Anchovy. They can cook up a mean pizza, but they are also skilled samurais. Get you a cat that can do both. The first episode, Stop Dragging My Cat Around, refers to the Stevie Nicks and Tom Petty song, Stop Dragging My Heart Around. While Speedy tries to deliver Lucille, a sheep, the pizza, Guido steals it to give it to her. The two cats keep stealing the pizza from each other to make the delivery, since both of them want to impress her. You mean a lot more than that to me. Thank you. Later, they fight a giant robotic dragon sent by Big Cheese's henchman, Bad Bird, as it wreaks havoc across Little Tokyo. This episode is another pop culture moment with a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles reference. While the dragon lays waste to Little Tokyo, the narrator says, an entire city block is flattened in the blink of an eye, including a retirement home for aging Ninja Turtles. An entire city block is flattened in the blink of an eye, including a retirement home for aging Ninja Turtles. This is soon followed by the old turtle in the frame exclaiming with a Kawabunga, which is Michelangelo's iconic catchphrase. For the continued narrative of Samurai Pizza Cats, the show follows the same pattern used by several 90s anime such as Sailor Moon, where the so-called heroes go against one of the henchmen of the big bad guy. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers used the same formula and so did the other Power Rangers from the 2000s, most notably Power Rangers SPD. The villains do not necessarily have to be similar. It can be a monster, a delinquent who does the dirty work, a mechanical creature, a magical creature, or anything of the same sort. But with reference to Samurai Pizza Cats, Speedy, Polly, and Guido generally go against giant mecha robots. And Bad Bird is often the one piloting these mechas. When the cats can't handle the adversary, they ask their friends for help. And this can be seen in the episode known as the Great Golden Cluck. Here, Bad Bird sends another flying demon that is the Golden Cluck to Little Tokyo while working as its pilot. The demon claims to be able to foretell the future and grant wishes in exchange for a price and even succeeds at doing so for the sake of Mrs. Bonehead, who ends up making a comment too adult for a kid's show. However, Mrs. Bonehead has been paid off by the Ninja Crows to act along with their plan. Seeing their success while being oblivious to the truth, everyone begins to give the robot their money for their wishes. Give me a ticket, I got problems too! 
With Big Cheese now swimming in money, the demon that is the Golden Cluck reaches out to a rich man to invest the money. However, the Pizza Cats arrive to battle the Ninja Crows, who release a violent octopus in retaliation. Despite being put in a position of disadvantage, the Cats emerge victorious after gaining help from the rescue team reinforcements. Apart from the pop culture references to other 90s cartoons, popular music and the likes, the show also makes it apparent that the characters are aware of being characters on television. Neither Japan nor the United States are strangers to this method, but it adds an extra dimension to the show. To understand the show better, let's get into the primary characters who take center stage in the show. Speedy Serviche, originally known as Yataro in Japanese, is the leader of the Samurai Pizza Cats. He was voiced by Rick Jones for the English adaptation, who has also worked in Saban's Adventures of Pinocchio and Saban's Adventures of Peter Pan. Speedy stays loyal to his name as he is shown to be quick and nimble, both as a crime fighter and a pizza delivery guy. He's confident in himself, loves to pose for the camera after victory, and has great comic timing. In fact, his name is a food pun, with ceviche being a pun on the seafood dish known as serviche, where the meat is not cooked but instead treated via the usage of citrus. As a samurai, his weapon of choice is his magical Ginzu sword, or the Masa Masa. He unleashes its power when he uses his special move known as the Cat's Eye Slash. As a main character, he has a crush on the sheep Lucille. Later, he develops a crush on his fellow samurai pizza cat Polly. Which brings us to the female lead of the show, Polly Esther, also known as Puru Run in the Japanese version. Her English voice actor was Sonia Ball, who later went on to work in Pinocchio 3000 and Heavy Metal 2000. Polly Esther's name is a pun on the word polyester. Despite Speedy being the leader of the Samurai Pizza Cats, Polly often does the leading and the bossing around. She has somewhat of a love-hate relationship with Speedy and sports a violent temper, even though she actually has romantic feelings for him, in typical Tsundere fashion. She is quite independent and has a cool signature move where she uses the power of love to fight evil. She also plays a flute as she heads to her fights and uses heart-shaped projectiles in battles. Her sword Kira Kira has a heart on the handle, with Heartbreaker as the hidden power. She can also create a gravity field which magnetically draws her opponents closer to her range, after which she commences her attack using her razor-sharp claws. Anyone who has a pet cat knows how lethal those claws can be. Finally, there's Guido Anchovy also known as Tsukashi in Japanese. His English voice actor, Terence Scammell, has worked on several live-action and animation projects, with Tripping the Rift being one of his most notable ones. Guido's surname Anchovy refers to the fish, while his name is slang used to refer to an Italian-American young male in New York. With pizza being important to the plot, the show obviously makes several Italian references, Guido aside. Even al dente, which is the name of the palace guard commander, is a term for hard pasta. Guido is super cool and smooth. He is often chasing after girls, which kind of defeats the purpose of being cool because a girl should be chasing after him. His romantic life does not fare well, though. He wields the samurai sunspot umbrella, using it to fire heat beams and rings, and also using it for hypnosis. He can even use it as a shield when open, and as a club when closed. Concealed within its handle is Pika Pika, a sword that unleashes the Ichimonji's fire. On the antagonistic end, there is Seymour the Big Cheese, also known as Kitsune Zuka Kuono Kami. He is a fox in the Japanese show, but a rat in the English adaptation. Dean Hagapian is his English voice actor, who also works as a music producer. I'm as nasty as a shark and have the nicest legs of any villain on TV. He is Little Tokyo's Prime Minister and the Supreme Commander of the Ninja Crow Clan. He often makes his ninja crows carry out his dirty work as he wants to take over Little Tokyo, but he's not competent enough to do so, and just like a rat, he falls to the cats. Pizza cats, they broke my machine. Arr, they foiled my plot. Not fair, not fair. He also comes from a family of crime, with his relatives all across the world being involved in criminal activities. Every time he fails, he explodes with anger. He is also super flashy and likes to flirt with his male subordinates. Big Cheese is supported by his Ninja Crows, with Bad Bird doing most of his dirty work as Speedy's arch-nemesis. In an episode known as Underground, Underwater, Undercooked, Bad Bird learns of hidden gold underneath the castle in Little Tokyo. He soon gets the Ninja Crows to hijack a train to make the passengers dig for the gold. 
Despite Bad Bird's rivalry with Speedy, he ends up helping the Pizza Cats out in the end. There's also Jerry Attrick, who works as Big Cheese's advisor and keeps his explosive nature in check. Other interesting facts about the cartoon. When Samurai Pizza Cats aired, many people assumed the intro song was sung by Fred Schneider, the lead singer of the B-52s. However, it was actually sung by the one who wrote the English dub, Michael Arrington. While he sang, he attempted to imitate a drunk version of American comedian Paul Lind for comedic effect. Even though comedy plays an important role in the show, the United States experienced Samurai Pizza Cats almost five years after its dubbing, so by the time it went on air, several of its jokes had become stale. In fact, the script used in Samurai Pizza Cats was completely different compared to Kiato Nindente Andy, mainly because the original script was apparently lost. But rumour has it that the script was intentionally withheld, so that the writing team could get more creative as they adapted the series. But this gave rise to a whole new world of problems. What happened to Samurai Pizza Cats? Samurai Pizza Cats tried to compete against heavyweight cartoons like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and even though the original Japanese version was a success, the English adaptation got the shorter end of the stick. Japanese as a language relies heavily on context and Japanese customs. This, combined with the syntax of the language being very different when compared to English, poses a huge problem. Japanese cannot be easily translated into English. This is a huge reason why you might find certain romantic pairings in battle, shown in anime, being popular in Japan while the West frowns upon its lack of development. Things just get lost in translation. The anime Attack on Titan was originally titled Shingeki no Kyojin, which means Attack Titan and not Attack on Titan. If you've read the manga or are up to date with the anime, you'll know that the show is a lot more about the Attack Titan that is Eren Yeager than about humans fighting titans. Japanese translations aside, you might be aware of the Spanish television series La Casa de Papel, which translates to Money Heist in English. The Spanish title actually means House of Paper, which describes the first two seasons of the show much better than the title Money Heist. So, the magnitude of Japanese to English translations often faltering is quite high. In fact, the word Teandi, from Kiato Ninden Teandi, doesn't even have an English equivalent. Saban Entertainment, the company that licensed the show, often tends to change the show to appeal to a Western audience, which can be seen with Mighty Morphin Power Rangers versus its Japanese counterpart, Kyo Ryu Sentai Zyu Ranger. Various episodes would be sampled and rearranged. There would be new scripts that would be derived from the information packages that came from Japan. It would give away the premise and the plot, but the Japanese comic elements wouldn't translate well in English. As a result, the showrunners would interpret the show in their own way, get a feel for it, and write a new script. Party time! The Ginzo Sword cuts the cheese once again! Who writes this stuff? Will we get a Samurai Pizza Cats movie? Sonic the Hedgehog got a second live-action CG movie this year. Love, Death and Robots has proved how well the West can do with several forms of animation, and Detective Pikachu is proof that a combination of live-action and CG animation can be a huge success. With older media being revived for a retelling using newer technology, a Samurai Pizza Cats movie may very well work out. The Pizza Cats could find themselves in the mainstream universe of our world with the help of a combination between live-action and CGI. They could also find themselves in a CGI world, this time with fresher puns and fourth wall breaking moments that could rival the likes of Fleabag. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is set to get a live action reboot as well. They might as well heighten the competition by bringing in Samurai Pizza Cats. Rewatching Samurai Pizza Cats today can make one realize how good the animation and art of the show was. These are things that we often tend to miss as kids, but appreciate as adults. This only adds to the fact that not only is the show great because of nostalgia it provides us with, but despite the sentimental crutches, Samurai Pizza Cat still stands tall and mighty in the world of animation. And with that, today's video comes to an end. What did you think of Samurai Pizza Cats? Did you enjoy this video? If yes, then don't forget to like and comment on this video. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.